Hello people, welcome back to the Digital Aviator channel and in this episode of Flight School we are going to further prepare a plane for flight after the engine start. And as always, don't apply this in the real world, but keep it all to simulator use only. Alright, welcome back in the plane. So, um, after a little bit about, of talk about weather and runways, we are now uh, back in the plane. Uh, just after we've completed the after engine start checklist, so we've just started the engine. Um, and, uh, well, there's a few more things we want to set up. We will uh, tune and set up our radios, our, our instruments have to be calibrated, and there's a few more checks that we'll do. Um, and the first thing that I do is to make sure that both of the magnetos are working. So, very quick talk about what the magnetos are. Uh, I'll probably make a video about how the engine works uh, later. Um, so, the magnetos are basically small generators that are connected to the engine. So, as the engine runs, uh, the magnetos generate electricity. Um, and that electricity is used by the spark plugs inside of the cylinders to ignite the fuel. So uh, the energy uh, basically comes from the engine to keep the engine powered. It's its own self-contained system, which is very nice. Um, and of course we have two magnetos, so that if one fails, I mean, yeah, there's moving parts, so things can fail, they will break down over time. Um, if one fails, we still have another one as a backup. So we're always flying with two. That's why we have the key usually set to both magnetos. Uh, but if one fails, we still have one as a backup and we can make an emergency landing. Uh, actually, you wouldn't even notice it if, it's, if, it, uh, if one has failed. Um, so I wouldn't really like to take off with just one magneto though. I mean, that's our last one. Uh, not that these break every moment, but it can happen. So it's always good to just cycle the magnetos, just run them on only the left one for a few seconds, see what the engine does. I mean, if there's crazy stutterings or the engine just shuts down completely, then there's something wrong. Uh, we'll check the right one as well. But uh, yeah, as you can see, I don't see any changes, so everything is good. You may see a small dip in RPM because we're only using one of the two spark plugs in uh, each cylinder. But yeah, that's to be expected. All right, let's then turn on our avionics. And of course, we have prepared all of this in the uh, pre-flight, so it should all turn back on. And we'll just run from the top uh, to the bottom again and just set everything up. So uh, on the top we have the audio control panel. Uh, I just turn the marker beacons off. We won't need them in uh, VFR flight, visual flight rules. Uh, we'll uh, use them in IFR, instrument flight rules, but that's something for much later. I just leave the COM1 radio on. Uh, I usually reserve my COM1 radio for frequencies where we actually com can communicate with ATC, like the tower frequency or uh, ground or approach, whatever. So I usually have that on because you're probably always listening at least on some kind of frequency. And then uh, I just leave everything off here uh, and I turn it on when I need it. So for example, the COM2 radio, we can uh, turn on when we want the weather. So then in our uh, Garmin uh, 430, we uh, will set in COM1, I will just prepare any communication frequencies I will need. So if you're at the towered field, I can tune the ground. That's probably the first frequency we want. And then the tower as the, the second one, just to prepare ahead. You know, just prepare the next or the first few frequencies that you will need. We'll do the same for VLOG1. I will tune my nav uh, frequencies that I will use for my flight. But uh, we're not going to be using any of those during this flight because we haven't really talked about how all of that works. Then the GPS itself, um, again, we just set it to the, uh, the map screen and we can zoom in and out with these arrows. So even though we're not using the GPS, we can at least use it to you know, gain some nice information about where we are in relation to other airports and nav beacons and whatever. Then uh, my COM2, I uh, usually set the weather frequency. So I still have Oceano's weather frequency, 118.375 um, from uh, the previous video. So we'll, uh, we'll actually listen to the weather right now. So let me turn on COM2, we'll listen to the weather and uh, I'll set up my altimeter. We'll just check out what the wind direction is, select the runway. So let's listen. L52 Oceano County Information Juliet. 1900 Zulu weather. Wind light and variable, visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 8, dew point minus 16. Altimeter 3014. Arriving runway 11, departing runway 11. Advise on initial contact you have, Juliet. All right, so that's the weather. Um, so what we got out of this is that the winds are light and variable, so it doesn't matter which runway we select. There's you know, no runway that will get a headwind with. Uh, the the um, 
there is no clouds, we don't uh, have any problems with visibility, so yeah, it looks like the weather is all perfectly fine. And of course I set my altimeter which was uh, 30.14, so the, um, what you do after you set the altimeter is just verify that it is displaying the correct altitude, which should be altitude of the terrain, because that's where our plane is. And it just so happens that Oceano is actually almost at sea level, it is, you know, close to the sea. So it is uh, pretty much at sea level. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about where you can find the um, the field elevation uh, on the charts when we learn about the charts. So you can find it on the VFR charts, uh, which we'll talk about later. Um, <clears throat> Alright, that's the altimeter set. And um, yeah, other than that, it's not really anything else that we have to do with the weather. So let's just continue with our avionics. We'll set up our NAV2 if we are going to be using those. Uh, I will use ADF or set up the ADF frequency if I'm going to use it. I've actually never used it uh, once. Uh, ADF is actually kind of a dead system. You don't see it very often. In Europe actually you find it very uh, very much. But in uh, I think in uh, the region where I usually fly in California there's like one or two. Maybe a few more uh, ADF beacons. So there's only a few. So you know. We'll just set it up if we're going to use it. We'll leave the transponder at standby at 1200 and we'll leave the autopilot off. Uh, so yeah, the winds were light and variable, so um, we could in theory select runway 11 for takeoff. But I'm actually going to taxi a little bit further to uh, runway 29 uh, because in the next video I will you know, spend the video talking about the taxi. So it makes it a little bit easier if we uh, actually have some time to taxi and uh, otherwise we'll just be at the runway right now. Uh, but yeah, otherwise I would have selected runway 1-1. One, one. Um, so yeah, altimeter set. Let's uh, update our heading uh, indicator. So this is a gyroscopic powered instrument. And that means that um, if the gyroscope is not spinning, which happens when the engine isn't running, uh, because then the vacuum pump is off, um, this is not displaying any information. And when you shut down the engine and, and start it back up, uh, and also just by running the engine, over time it will... Uh, kind of drift off the correct course or of the correct heading. So each time you start, it will probably be off by a few degrees or something, uh, or maybe the plane has been moved uh, without the engine running. So you have to update it. So what we do is we look at the magnetic compass uh, because this is always accurate as long as it can freely turn. Um, but of course, it is uh, it's only accurate if the plane is stable. If we're flying and there's turbulence, this will sway all over the place. So south is 180, this is about 196, I would say. So let's go back here. So here's south and here's 196. So that's now updated. And um, I'll set my heading bug to the runway heading. So this, just so that I remember the runway heading and it helps me, uh, you know, seeing if the runway runs left or right, uh, just looking at my heading, I can position my plane uh, in, you know, in relation to the runway, which is always nice. All right, so um, then we're basically ready to taxi. We only have one other thing to do, and that is the before taxi checklist. So uh, this is my personal checklist, which you can find on my website, digitalaviator.net, and there's a link in the description, of course, down below. So uh, magnetos have been cycled, we've tested them. Avionics are on and we have set them. Frequencies and uh, you know everything is set as I would like it. Weather has been obtained. The altimeter has been set and the field elevation is verified. Heading indicator is set. Uh, and what you can also do by the way, I forgot about that, is just to make sure that the uh, um, artificial horizon is uh, pointing towards the horizon. Uh, so yeah, that is just part of the next item, flight instruments, just check all of your flight instruments. So I can see my airspeed is zero. If you have a strong headwind just parked, it could be slightly higher than zero, but you don't want to see anything like uh, 100 knots because that would definitely be wrong. Uh, so yeah, the attitude indicator is stable. It's not banking or pitching. Uh, altimeter is uh, set. The vertical speed is zero. We have set our heading and the turn coordinator and the slip indicator are also neutral. So all of our flight instruments are as they should be. So then we could uh, start a taxi, but um, uh, there's one tip I would like to give you, and that is to not start your taxi if the oil temperature is still at or below 75 Fahrenheit. That's the lowest that the oil temperature indicator will show you. And the reason for that is that um, if we have a short taxi, for example, to runway 11, and the oil temperature is just 
nowhere near the green yet. By the time we arrive of the runway, it will probably still not be in the green. And we can only continue after the taxi with uh, an engine run up. That's a, a test at higher RPM, just to verify the engine works at higher RPM. We cannot do that and we cannot take off because for that the oil temperature needs to be green. So um, that's why I would say only start taxiing when the temperature has just started to come above 75. Then you know that it will maybe take only one or two other minutes uh, to um, to get into the green. And by the time we arrive at the runway, we are ready to go. Uh, if we have to wait at the runway, then we're probably just blocking like traffic at the taxiway who maybe wants to take off and who is ready. So uh, for us, the uh, oil temperature is green, that's great. And then I just turn the taxi lights on and the nav lights. These are actually optional. You don't have to turn the taxi and nav lights on during the day. Uh, only in low visibility weather and during the night from sunset to sunrise. Uh, but I figure, you know, we have them available. Why not use them? People can see them, uh, although they are not very clear during the day. But if we point towards other people or the planes, they will see that I have my taxi light on and they just are immediately, you know, they immediately know that I'm taxiing or I'm about to taxi. So, uh, you know, I just have them uh, on even though they're not technically required. All right, so then we can start a taxi and uh, of course we'll do that in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. See you next time.